Hello, welcome back. So I have wanted to do a bee tumbler for a long time now, and I just needed that push over the edge, that little um, inspiration moment. And when I saw that decal from Alana's gift shop, the black and and white, the that classic look of a bee, and it's so realistic, I just knew that this was my inspiration. So I started off with a sanded and prepped 30 ounce, um, just a regular skinny tapered. I knew it wasn't going to matter if I did a straight because we weren't doing any kind of vinyl work or, you know, stripes or anything like that. It was just going to be a glittering and a crackle on top. So I knew this shape would be fine. Now I started off with putting the epoxy on here and as it was on the turner i just put maybe five milliliters i put a little bit more because this is a chunky chunky glitter that we are going to put on here and so i wanted to put it on there while it was spinning and put more epoxy so that we could have it lay down as flat as possible so i just continued to just kind of make sure that it was leveled out that it was smooth I made sure that it was spinning for probably, I don't know, probably about 10 minutes before I went into the glittering. So we're going to start off with 24 karat gold chunky from the Glitter Ranch. This is a gorgeous, just brassy gold. And that's what I wanted for this. I wanted the look of honey glowing in the sun, you know, when you pull out the you know, the honeycombs from the, from the, you know, hive and everything that the, the honey that's dripping off of there. I wanted that look. I wanted that just glowing look. And I knew that this 24 karat, that, that really bright brassy gold was going to be perfect. And if that's the kind of color that you're looking for, this is an absolutely gorgeous color. And it also has just all that holographic colors that just make it sparkle and I just absolutely love it for this particular tumbler and any time that you want that really true gold, gold color, this is going to be it. So as you can see, as I was talking, I was just pouring it on there. Now I have a parchment piece of parchment paper underneath because I wanted to catch, obviously catch all of that glitter that was going down. I just you know, just poured it on there so that we could get a flat surface because the chunky can get really bad. So then I came through a 24 karat holographic fine so that we could cover up any of any spots that were open because I painted it with that bright yellow color because I, I wanted it to have that undertone of bright yellow, but also, so just in case if you miss a spot or whatever, it's that, that bright yellow underneath is not going to, I mean, it'll, it will camouflage any kind of holes, but then I also wanted to go through with the fine. This is the way I always do it. I always fill in with the fine so that you can fill in any and all spots so that you don't have any issues. But what I also did was take the bottom of the tumbler and I took it off of the the spinner there and I took the bottom of it and stuck it right into that fine on the for the bottom to have that fine instead of having the chunky on the bottom because it will get just really bad it's hard to epoxy all that chunkiness on the bottom so if you really want that and because we're doing the crackle over this it wasn't a big deal we can just put some glitter on the bottom and so after it spun for probably 20 minutes or more i just went through with the parchment paper that i used to catch all the glitter and i just kind of patted it and patted it and patted it just as low as i just as just like I would have rolled it in the parchment paper, I just patted it with that parchment paper. So then, of course, we go in with the polycrylic. Now, we're not worried about anything blending with another color, but because it's so chunky, 
I don't want a whole bunch of glitter to be coming off as I'm trying to epoxy and just making a mess. So I want to seal this in with that polycrylic really nice and just give it a good base. It also helps not it, it, it also helps you not to use so much epoxy if you use this polycrylic to seal it in. Or you could use the um, counterculture uh, poly your thing your, your your thing sealer or whatever it is I, I have I have a tiny sample of it and I but I really do like the polycrylic to me it works fine it doesn't say that it has UV things that some people say that the other one does but I haven't had any problems and I use it all the time so anyways you can get this at Walmart or Lowe's and you can also get the spray which I use frequently as well if I just need a quick deal or I've had just so many different glitters on there that I just want to spray it down instead of you know uh, intentionally dragging them across with the you know brush that we use whenever we do it out of the can so either one is going to give you that perfect seal in my opinion so as always I took this outside and used the Dremel on the edge and now um, I mean on the rim there and then now I'm just taking my sanding block and just kind of knocking off any little sharp edges that are there. I'm doing the same thing on the bottom and around the tumbler. I did put two coats of epoxy on this after we sealed it with the polycrylic. Two coats, just back to back, boom, boom. Don't even, don't even try to come after one coat. It, that chunky, it, it needs as much as possible because it will, you will sand that color right off of that. Um, it, it would just get bad. So here I was picking off a piece that um, sometimes it just, there's like a piece that just doesn't get epoxy on it and it just kind of sticks out and I just pick it off and then boom, I just sand over it and we can just put another coat of epoxy and boom, we're good. So, but I was going to put a crackle over this, so I did not need another coat of epoxy at that two coats is fine. So I was measuring here to see what the diameter of the cup was in the certain spots and then also the length of it so that I could cut out my um you know my stencils that I was going to be putting on here and this is Oracle 631 and it is a, a removable vinyl so I would suggest using removable vinyl I have not had good success when I use regular vinyl unless I do it right away you it's like you if you'd use it, you got to just take it off immediately. But the removable works really well if you just want to take it off. Now, this was all curled up in a in a thing, so I had to tape it down so that we could get a good uh, good cut here. But also, I did not film me putting the stencils on here. I apologize for that. I have got a new phone and going from one program to the next. I don't know what happened to that video. Um this is the crackle medium i showed it last week it is the best totally use it 10 out of 10 would recommend don't use anything else so i have placed all of the stencils on the cup now and i'm going to put this in just regular slow not slow motion but just regular time <laughs> because i wanted y'all to see the different stencils that i used on here my son was playing next to me with his cars so I was just letting him play as I was painting. So this is um, Christy Taylor's Pantheon Paints. I absolutely love this color. It's just that creamy white color and it gives such just a rustic feel, an old aged kind of feel to it. And I love this color for a crackle especially. So that's what I just did these different. I will definitely add the, um, the SVG or the, the files for these. I will put them in my group. So click the link down below and the the files will be available the drips i drew myself and i've just put them cut them out on my cricut and put it on there i didn't want to do a drip i just i just haven't had the the guts to do a drip yet so i just did a stencil i just drew it out myself and <clears throat> put it on there on the top there and then I did just that honeycomb look around the edge and then I also did an outline for the name at the bottom there and as you can see I just did big swoops of paint just 
one swoop, one swoop, one swoop. Don't you don't want to do a bunch of painting on this. It will ruin the crackle. It just doesn't work. So just one swipe up and down and that's it. And then you just let it sit to dry for about an hour and then we'll come back and we'll take off the stencils. So I sped this up just for the sake of time and because I do kind of go a little bit carefully here. I didn't want too much, um, you know, ripping of the paint like I did last week. It was more, you know, I wanted to make sure we got that, those structured look of the drips and the honeycomb. So I was a little bit more careful this week. So I did speed this part up, but I wanted y'all to see the first part with the stencils since I didn't have that video of me placing all the stencils on there. So this is why I was making sure this was in here. But I mean, essentially, that's all I did was this is after about an hour after the paint dries. You want to wait an hour after the crackle dries and then an hour after the paint dries. Go do a chore, clean up the kitchen or something, and then come back and then boom, you're ready to go. So, and this is where I just peeled off all of the honeycombs. Now, the paint was like dried on top of some of the pieces of vinyl there and so I was just peeling the paint off and then peeling the honeycomb off but I mean basically you just remove all of them I put a bright color so that I could see them I don't know that it would matter but you know I guess just trial and error I, I put like a bright red so that I could see them underneath the white maybe I wouldn't use white or gold maybe but I think the I think the paint the way the paint dries you can see the outline of the paint and the out I mean the outline of the stencil underneath the paint so I don't think you have a problem with that as long as you're using removable so I'll go into real quick of why I made this tumbler I found the Texas Bee Works lady on TikTok and I absolutely fell in love with what she was doing. At first, I thought she was crazy nuts. But then it was, I read this article about her in Texas Monthly. And it was just a really beautiful story. And it was beautiful about, talked about her and her husband and just their life and what she does and why she does it. And I'm just very impressed with people that just really follow their dreams and follow something that is really meant for them. And I, I, I really gen, genuinely think that that is this this purpose is, is hers and so I just I got inspired to do this bee tumbler by that decal and I wanted to send this to her I've sent her some messages I've sent commented on some things I've sent her a message on TikTok and email and I haven't got a response but I'm hoping that once I mail it to her she'll get it and she'll love it I really hope she does so but that's who I made it for and that's why her name is Erica with a K and I thought that was cool too so here Right after the crackle, right after I got all the stencil done and everything and I knew the paint was dry, I just went in with a coat of epoxy. Because that decal, if I would have put that on there, I was going to use transfer tape or if I needed to like pull it up in ever the slightest bit to reposition or something, I'm pretty sure that paint would have come up. So I'm just going to put a coat of epoxy just to make sure that we are not going to have any problems with that paint coming up. We're just going to seal this in and go on to the next step. So at this point, we have two coats of epoxy on top of the glitter. Then we had the crackle, the crackle paint peeled the stencil off and now we have gone in with a coat of epoxy and now I am cleaning up my rim again. I do this periodically throughout because I just don't, I don't like cleaning up a bunch of mess at the very end of the cup. I feel like if you do it as you go along that you have better success with getting everything that you need to clean and dry and you know just uh, that's just my opinion, but that's the way I do it. Anyways, I took my file here and filed any places that were, um, had a little pointy rough place, the file. I love this thing. Um, and then I just sanded anywhere around the cup just to make sure we were good to go on, um, you know, just having a smooth surface because we're going to be doing some jewel work next. And I just wanted to get all of that out of the way before we put the decal on and all of that. And first, as always, always clean with alcohol before you put your decal on. I swear by it. It makes things stick a lot better and you just have a longer life with it staying on there right. So this is a decal from Alana's Gift Shop and I absolutely love this, this decal. It really did inspire this tumbler. I wanted to have that 
old fashioned look about it. And I just felt like this real looking bee with the flowers and all that would have been on it on an old can of, you know, or a jar of honey or something like that. So that's where I got the inspiration for the crackle and all of that. So I used transfer tape to put it on there. And then once you get it on there, just make sure just as any, if with anything that you put on, make sure there's no uh, bubbles or anything like that. These bees and these little pieces of honeycomb I found off of Amazon. And I was looking for a specific style because I did not want ones that had a loop at the top. I wanted to be able to glue these on. I didn't want to have to pick something off or I didn't want it. I wanted to look like it was a flat piece, you know, a, a bee and then these little honeycomb pieces. I found these in my search and I was like, oh my gosh, those are so cute. So it was totally, I didn't plan on using these, but once I saw them, I knew I had to use it. It was, they were just so awesome. So I used this glue um i will link it down below and i use it for my barrettes or anything uh like keychains or something like that if i needed to i don't know that it is like you know it's not like a super glue or something like that but all i needed to do here was ensure that it was stuck on the cup so that we could epoxy over it and and short of digging it out of the epoxy it's not coming off uh once it's once it's glued on there and the glue dries and then you epoxy over it a couple times this thing ain't going nowhere but i mean it is it is going to be raised up out of the epoxy and it is going you're going to be able to feel it when you're touching the cup so with that i made sure that i was putting them in a spot that wasn't so you know, like where you could actually hold the cup i wanted to make sure that uh, you know your hand could go around and you weren't you know having to hold on to a bee or a honeycomb so i kind of put them up at the top and then up at the bottom so you still had that space for you know handling the cup and obviously I went around, you know, several times, like, do I put it here? Do I put it there? Do I want to put it here? Do I want to put it there? So, I mean, this is totally up to you. It depends on where you put your little honeycomb pieces. It depends on, you know, yeah, how much crackle you have or whatever, or the look you're going for. These were just adorable. I thought they just added just such dimension. And I don't know. I just, it's, that was like my uh, form of a doing 3d on a cup instead of doing the uh, drips on it <laughs> so I probably let each one dry for about 30 minutes or so before I went to move the cup around and do another one on the other side so that we could ensure that I wasn't messing with it or you know harming it uh, so that's just a, something you want to look at while you're doing this so I'm using this chrome black that I use all the time. <laughs> I love this stuff so much. So I put her name, I, I typed out her name and did an offset and that's what I did underneath for the um, crackle. I put that as the stencil underneath and so I peeled that and then I did queen because you know she's always talking about the queen bee and that the queen is very important and I think she herself is kind of a queen bee because she takes care of these bees and I don't I just love I love the whole story I think it's awesome and her name's Erica so maybe maybe that was part of the reason why I really liked it so I just added a little bit on here um, added the queen and then I put Erica in the offset space down at the bottom there I second guessed myself on the black here I thought maybe it was a little too dark and I was thinking maybe I'll put a white but I stayed with it and I really love it I, I it is a little bit darker than I had maybe imagined but but it still looks really cool and it's just I just didn't want her name to be like you know coming off of the cup really I just I just wanted everything to just kind of like flow together and so I thought it did so I wanted to add a little bit more of the jewels, or I wanted to add two more. I wanted to add one more bee and one more honeycomb, but I was just debating on where I wanted to put it, and so I decided I was going to put it up above where that queen was, and, you know, kind of like it was stuck in the honey there, and so 
it just really just I think it just whatever feel whatever you feel like it needs to be at the time I think is how this is all going to come out because it was like I went around and around and around and around and around and you know I was like should I put it there no it's too close to the other one and I'll put it here it's too close to that one like you know it was it was really kind of just you know trial and error to figure out where I wanted to put it so I ended up putting it at the bottom there and the B at the top and that was all the ones that I used. I just used a few. There is a lot in this bag, but you can have some for, the, for you know, any orders that you get, hopefully, from this. So I wanted to show you this first layer of epoxy that I put on after I glued the bees and the honeycomb on here. Um, I'm pretty sure I waited overnight for this. Pretty sure that I, I did it that day before and then I was doing other things and then I came back. Um, I do not remember exactly, but I think it was, I waited a day or I waited until the morning to kind of do this. But I wanted to show you that I made sure that I wasn't like globbing up the epoxy on those pieces. Like I was trying to make sure that the epoxy was on the other part of the cup but when I got to those I just I made sure I just kind of went over them and if there was any epoxy that was you know like gooping around it I made sure that I kind of pushed it off or you know pulled it away from there uh, it you're gonna get epoxy on top of them it's just the way it is and they were they came out just fine the sparkles were still there and everything but this is just to ensure that they're not going anywhere. You know, you don't want someone coming and telling you that their little pieces fell off or, um, you know, short of digging them out, like I said, I, they're not going anywhere. So this was the first coat of epoxy and I just went through and made sure that I got everything covered, all the spaces, all the bees, all the honeycomb, everything, made sure I got my edge and all of that. And then after that, we went into a second coat of epoxy. So this is my second coat I needed to do that because there was just a few little places that were kind of divoted in and just, you know, wanted to make sure that everything was solid and really um, smooth. And there she is again. So pretty. I just love it. I've always wanted to do one of these and I'm so happy how this turned out. It gave me exactly the vibe I wanted. I love that decal. I love the little bees. I really hope Erica gets this, and I really hope she loves it. Um, if you redo this, please join my group. Tag me in the picture. Please comment. Please subscribe, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.